Okay, in this video, I'm going to go through the process of doing a very simple 3D model, and I'm going to use the poly modeling tools inside of 3D Code. So in the splash screen, go ahead and choose the poly modeling tool. And now from here, we'll go ahead and um, bring in our, our reference image planes. So if you go to the camera icon in the corner, uh, down to background, and then follow that down to the reference images, for the side view, that's going to be my x-axis, so we'll go ahead and bring in an image. I already have some images already set up, so I'll bring in my side view. And now I'm going to bring in my front view. Same process. And now I'll choose the z-axis. And now you can see as I rotate the camera, it flips to the, to the nearest axis, it'll flip the reference image plane that you have assigned to that. So when I go from my X to my Z, it flips for me. Excellent. Also, you'll notice that there's this green box with some handles. This allows me to manipulate that image. I can scale it, I can move it, make sure everything's centered. Um, what I like to do is, in, the, in this process, I like to show the um, axes handles here. And then this way, I can see if my image is perfectly centered. And you can see that it's not. It's not quite centered, so I'll just go ahead and grab this handle right here and I'll move my image so you can see I can move it around. So I'll just place that right pretty darn close in the middle there just like that and I'm happy with that. So I'll, once I'm done I can just choose to close the guides or click this little pin up here. That just means that this will stay this will stay here while I'm working and then if I ever need to go back to it I can unpin it. But I think we're good so I'm just going to close the guides. You can always re Open them by going back to the camera, backgrounds, and then right over here you'll see this edit image, edit image placement. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, if you click that, it'll bring it back. So we're just going to go ahead and close it for now. And I'm going to get rid of these um, axes guides. There we go. All right. So now that we're going, let's go ahead and bring in a 3D primitive. So if you go to 3D primitives, click on that. And then right up on top here, you can choose the primitive you want to bring in. I'm going to bring in a cube. And there we go. We have a cube. Um, one thing you're going to notice is when you start scaling the cube, you'll see that it starts adding segments and it starts cutting it. or not cutting it, but starts partitioning your cube to where it's trying to create these even uh, segments and increments. Um, I don't care for that. Like when I'm working, I want to be in full control of the number of segments that I have. So if you go under the tools options, you'll see that there's this uniform, uniform division. Just uncheck that. Now you have full control and now you can use the uh, division section. If that's enabled, you can't change those. Those are automatic. So we we'll disable it and then just go ahead and set those to zero. Okay, now I have control of that cube and I can start to place it where I want. And um, we haven't committed it yet. That means that we haven't actually brought it into the scene. It's still in a um, visualization mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this close to where I want it. Like so. And then I'll hit apply to enter. But actually, let me get the side first. There we go. All right, so now I'll apply it. And now that I've applied it, it's actually part of my layer. So I can enable and disable it. So let's go ahead and name that body. All right, cool. We've got our model. I'm going to bring up that opacity. And um, first thing I want to do is go ahead and just taper those shoulders in. So I'll go ahead and um, do that by selecting the vertices. And you want to make sure that you are in the rectangular selection. And you also want to make sure that ignore background faces is unchecked. So now we can um, select our vertices and it'll select all of them. <clears throat> it'll select all of them and use the transform and go ahead and just pull those in like so. Next thing we're going to do is extrude the bottom face so we can make this little ledge. And we'll do that by selecting the face mode and go ahead and select the face on the bottom. And let's extrude that down. So you can either right click in your view and choose extrude face, or you can choose it from 
the side panel. I'll just choose it from here, street face, and then just pull this down. All right, so now we've got the body. You know what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and disable the card flipping. I mean, I'm gonna have it so it only displays the card when I'm nearest the facing the axes. So um, I'll show you what I mean. If you go to the camera under backgrounds, there's this option that says show in exact view. So if you click that, when you're rotating, you're not gonna have the boxes, but when you get close to that axis, then it's gonna show up. I actually like that better because sometimes I just wanna take a look at the model and make sure everything's looking okay. And I don't like to have um, this card in front of it all the time. Okay, next let's go ahead and uh, build up the legs. So we'll go from the side view. And actually let's, let's create this bottom piece right here. So we'll just go ahead to 3D models again. We'll bring this cube. Make sure you create a new layer and now you can apply it to a new layer like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and change its orientation a bit. We'll select the cube. You can select the cube two ways. You can um, double click on it and that'll select it. Or you can select the layer that you're interested in and then choose this select all faces from layer. And then now from here, I wanna move my pivot. So we'll go ahead and choose this move only gizmo. And then I'll just go ahead and drop that down where I want it like so, and then I'll uncheck it. So now my pivot's set down below and I can start to shape my cube. Like so, and let's look at the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an arch as well so this thing can actually move. So we'll just go ahead and start applying some cuts and we can do that with the split ring and we'll apply a cut here here, one in the center. Let's go ahead and do this and that. Great. We'll go back and choose vertices and we'll go ahead and just start moving these in place. Okay. Great. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this in just a bit. If you ever see that the axis ends up looking weird like that, just go ahead and hit reset axis, and that'll fix that for you. Oops. Actually, I'm just gonna, I just wanna pull in the, um, oops. Let me hide that layer. I just want to pull in the two edges here a bit. They're competing with the um, body. So we'll go ahead and scale those in. Just a nudge. I might need to do the same to the side as well. Actually, the side's gonna be fine like that. All right, so now go ahead and look. And that looks okay. Perfect. Okay, next, why don't we go ahead and build the legs. With the legs, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start by bringing in a cylinder, like so. And then you can, we can, so you can, it's interesting, the cylinder has three handles. Let me go to a different angle here. You can see the two red ones. There's a red one on the top, a red one on the bottom. If you pull any of these manipulators, it'll change its uh, scale from either of those ends. If you grab the blue one, that's, that'll scale it this way. Now again, you'll see that the edges start changing as you start scaling it. This is that uniform division. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that. And again, set my divisions to where I want them. I think I'm gonna set that to eight. And I'm gonna rotate it 
90 degrees. So if you want to rotate in increments, um, when you grab this handle, if you normally rotate, it'll rotate like so. If while you're still uh, with the left button clicked and you hit spacebar, you can type in an exact number or you can hold control and then click on the handle and that'll snap in 45 degree angles. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building the leg. I'm gonna go ahead and just put that off to the side like so and we'll center it. All right, I'll grab this blue ring and that's gonna scale all of it uniformly. So maybe we'll do something like this. Perfect. Go to the front. And do that. Then let's go ahead and apply. Uh, again, we'll need a new layer. So I forgot to name this one. This one is body skirt. And this new one, we'll call it left leg. And let's apply. You can apply by clicking apply or just hitting enter in the key on the keyboard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this exact same primitive and I'm going to place it right in the middle because that's going to be the middle piece here. So I'll go ahead and bring that down or pull this in like so. And this will be the leg separator. Okay. And apply. Excellent. Okay, let's go back to the leg. And what we're gonna do is we need to create this leg. We're gonna pull it from this cylinder. And we'll do that by selecting these two faces. And we'll flatten them like that. And let's go to vertices. In fact, I'm gonna hide the rest of this, just so I don't select it. Take this, make that flat. I think that's gonna be fine. And now let's select those faces again. This one and this one. And we'll extrude. Face extrude. And we'll pull that all the way. Actually, we'll just pull it to here and then hit enter and then pull again. Perfect. We'll select the front face, hit enter, and there we go. Nice. All right. So why don't we go ahead and I guess at this point we should make these quads. So what we can do is go ahead and just split this mesh. Do the same to this side. Okay, let's go ahead and put everything back. And I'll go ahead and now copy this left leg to the right leg. Select the um, layer, and you'll see that there's this duplicate. So go ahead and click that. Slide that over. And hit enter. Okay, so all our pieces are there. Perfect. All right, next, we're going to go ahead into transform mode and select the vertices. And we're going to fix, make sure we're perpendicular. Yeah, we're going to fix this edge like so. And let's move the pivot. Now 
from below. And let's now rotate. There we go. Perfect. We'll do the same to the side. Great. All right. Let's go ahead and do the neck and head. All right, we'll go to 3D primitives. This time we'll grab a cylinder. And if you ever want to go back to the default orientation, you can just always hit uh, rescale or reset axes, I believe. There you go. All right, let's get that centered. All right, there we go. Yeah, there we go, something like that. Perfect. Okay, we're probably gonna wanna add bevels. So then we'll go ahead and select the edges, oops. I forgot to apply that to a layer. So we'll create a new layer and apply. And that is now the head. So if we want to create bevels, we're going to go ahead and select the edges. Usually double clicking will select it, but I'm not sure what's happening right now. Okay, now we've got our edges selected. Let's go ahead and bevel. That's okay, we'll just go from here, bevel. And then you can just use this bevel size and you can bring it down to where you need. Right now it's set to only one segment. We'll go ahead and add a couple more, like so, and then hit okay. And now we've got our bevel. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and do the same with the top. We'll do 3D primitive. We already got the cylinder and we'll just go ahead and place it. Okay, like so. And we'll just select the top edge. Another way you can just select the edge, by the way, in a case like this, let me go ahead and create a layer first. Is you can always just select the face. And then when you switch it to edges, it'll select the edges for that face. Okay, let's go ahead and bevel. And we'll bring that down like so. Perfect. Hit OK. And we'll give that a name. Head button. And now we need the neck. So we'll go to 3D primitive again. And bring that straight down. All right. This is going to be the neck. And now let's build the arms. Okay, so the arms are a little, a little interesting. So we'll go ahead and create another primitive. The cylinder's fine, so let's go ahead and... Let me see, how do we want to do this? All right, we'll go off the side view. Actually, I don't think I want a cylinder. I think I want this capsule. There we go. Let's make that eight. And I think that's that's good. Yeah, that's good. So let's go ahead and scale it.
Okay, let's do this. Bring that over here, like so. And apply. All right, great. I think the way we want to do this is we'll go ahead and select And we'll set our pivot to here, like so. Reposition my pivot, like so. And let's rotate that again. Let's go ahead and flatten it, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. In fact, we'll go ahead and create a bevel along that edge. So double click like that and bevel. Except this time I don't want those segments. To do it and now I can fix all right and we just bring this vertice in of course we're gonna scale this down again gotta be careful not to select anything in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and hide those pieces and then we'll go ahead and scale this. Okay. Now with these pieces, the way these Legos are set up is this is flat and that's going to twist in. So in this case, I'll go ahead and select this mesh, set my pivot Set my pivot right around here and then rotate. This is going to flatten out, so I'll just go ahead and grab those vertices. And start flattening those out. Gonna move the pivot. And start making some adjustments. Okay, perfect. All right, I don't know about perfect, but that's going to be close enough. Oops. Let's fix a few things. We'll make that work. I think this needs to go up. And this, yeah, these need to be fixed. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and bump these up. This is okay. This one's too low. Okay, perfect. Let's get the body back. Okay, so now we'll just go ahead and get these a little bit more fitted. All right, so now let's build the arm here. 
it's going to be another cylinder and let's go ahead and flip that around i think i go back and select these faces Okay, yeah. I'm going to rotate that so it's more perpendicular, like this. Yeah, okay, that's going to work better. Okay, we'll go ahead and bring in another cylinder, like so. And that's going to be this. Actually, I don't even need to do that. I'll just go ahead and extrude this. Might be a little thin, but I think it's going to be fine. Go ahead and face extrude. Like so. And now we need to build this cylinder. Okay, so this is still the hand. Actually, left arm. Now let's add, let's see, let's go ahead and bring in this hollow tube, like so. Make that eight, and we'll just do it <clears throat> based on the front here. So I'll rotate this around. And we'll just go ahead and that change the radius a bit and then take the inner radius or wall thickness That's part. okay and I think what I want to do at this point is go ahead and delete well first we'll have to yeah let's go ahead and uh, apply this onto the layer and then now we'll go ahead and delete those faces. Like so. And I believe at this point we can just go ahead and cap. Close holes. Okay. Let's go back to where we were. And at this point, let's, um, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and do a split ring. So, and that should cut all the way around. Now we can go ahead and move those vertices. Okay. Now let's get this in place again. So let's just get this little curve going here. Okay, I think I'm going to make it smaller because the front is a different proportion than the back or the side view. So I'm just going to go ahead and fit it a little bit more to the side view. So let's go ahead and select that again. And this time I'm going to go ahead and just scale. Scale it like so and a little bit taller there. Great. Now I'm just going to go ahead and 
rotate that. So it's a little bit more fitting. Okay. And now that we've got that, and let's make this left grip. We can copy these over to the other side. So we're going to take his this left arm and left hand. So we'll take the left arm first. And there's a not duplicate, but a symmetry. This one right here. So I believe in this case, symmetry needs to be on. Let's try it without. Maybe it doesn't. I kind of feel like it does. Okay. So now we just, while that's high, while that's selected, so we'll select it and do a symmetry. There we go. And by doing that, it should have created. Okay. It's on the same layer. That's okay. We can separate that later. And we'll do the same with the grip. And now we've got our guy. But now we're going to make sure he subdivides OK. So the next step is going to be adding the right subdivisions. So we'll go ahead and go to split ring. And we'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and hide my cards. Okay, we'll just do hide all. And let's see what we're going to do here. Now we have some support edges here. All right, all right. I'm going to add a support edge here. Here. Okay, just about there. Let me just hide the legs really quick and make sure this has the support edge here as well. All right, let's see what this does. Cool. All right, what we need to do now is actually, I believe maybe, I think this is going to need an edge here. Here. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Okay, so instead of subdividing the model, at this point, um, what we can do is, uh, let's go into perspective view. What we can do is we can um, basically show the sculpt version of this. So if we choose sculpt, it's actually, I don't know if you, don't know if you can see it. Let me take the opacity down. It actually created the um, subdivided sculpt mesh underneath it. So now we have the cage of the model, but we're looking at the sculpt mesh. And if we want to go at a higher subdivision, um, we can always choose a subdivision of two or three. And you can see that it's just going to subdivide that more. What's nice about this is I'm just now going to keep my um, topology for my um, model, but I can always go to the render and see what that looks like. And so now we've got our cool little Lego guy. 
that's not so cool. I'll, I'll have to fix that. But yeah, it's um, it's 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 interesting. I, I wouldn't say uh, it would be equivalent to like a Maya or something like that, but it's definitely enough three D modeling to get some basic things done. Um, I've used it on other simple projects, but um, I think it's just the beginning. I think with three D modeling, with the poly modeling tools inside of three D coat, eventually it'll grow and have more advanced features. But for right now, it's um, you know it's kind of it's kind of nice being able to model and then go straight into your sculpt. Another another nice thing about having it in your sculpt is you have the option of um, you know continually modeling on the sculpt and having the um, having the cage always change with that as well. So, for example, if I go over to the sculpt room, my model is in here, and you can see this conform retopo mesh. If I if I take this now that I have that checked, if I start sculpting it's going to move my mesh to make sure it fits the sculpt. So it's, it's as if you're, instead of pulling the cage and seeing the result, you're actually sculpting on the model and the cage is going to wrap onto the result of the sculpt. So it's just kind of an interesting way to, uh, to work and uh, I kind of like it. I just feel like it's lacking a little bit um, on the modeling tools, but I, I think those will come later. All right, well, let's Let's end this. That was pretty much, um, yeah, so we can end this here. And that's just kind of um, how we can build a, you know, a simple and decent model inside of 3D Coat using the 3D poly modeling tools. All right, well, thanks for hanging around and um, yeah, give it a go and see if you like it. Uh, you can always um, put some suggestions in the forum. And uh, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty great about uh, tracking those suggestions and uh, turning them around. All right, well, thanks a lot.